Metro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Well, <laughs> I've just finished loading up my UMCO 3500 US tackle box with basically all of my uh, vintage crankbaits. I'd had a number of them spread about a couple different tackle boxes, so I decided to get the big dog and consolidate. By the way, this would not be the box for bank fishing. Holy mackerel. Oh, it's like 50 pounds. It is summertime in Texas. It is deep cranking season, and we are gonna get on the water today with perhaps one of the most sought after vintage crankbaits around. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish at old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon. That way you know when we post a new video like this one. Okay, so let's open this thing up and I will show you guys what's inside. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> That's a lot of old school plastic. I've got a ton of stuff here. And by the way, I'm gonna post some pictures on Instagram of this tackle box and maybe it's time to do a tackle run through. It's been a hot minute since I've gone through all of our vintage tackle. And um, if that's something you all wanna see, drop a comment down below and we'll definitely do a vintage tackle run through. The bait that I'm gonna be fishing with today is definitely one of the most sought after vintage crankbaits around. It is still available today and it's still a fish catcher. But for those in the know, there is something truly special about the original form of this bait. You can't go to Lake of the Ozarks or Bull Shoals without a few of these. Of course, I'm talking about this guy, the original pre-Rapala wiggle wart. Rapala purchased storm lures in late 1999, early 2000, and they continue making its by far most popular crankbait, the original wiggle wart. That being said, they made some specific changes that we'll talk about, which forever altered the action and the sound of that magical bait. You can still find the pre rapala baits online, but I remember when I first started getting into these baits, I couldn't tell which ones were actually pre rapala and which ones were post-acquisition. Here I've got both versions. This is a Rapala version of the Wigglewort, and here is a genuine pre rapala version. The most obvious difference of a pre rapala wiggle wart and a post is that the original wiggle warts say wiggle wart right under the bill. And the rapala versions say storm. In addition to that, the rapala versions tend to come with a snap, while the original pre rapala versions come with the original split ring. For those of us that like to fish at old school, I know that we can kind of geek out on the old stuff and get a little bit territorial of old versus new, but there are definitely some key differences of the pre rapala bait with the new. If you talk to any wiggle wart enthusiast, the first thing they'll tell you is that the original baits hunted much better than the new ones. The original warts had a two piece mold that were basically put together. For better or worse, this was sort of a sloppy process and I'll show you the bill here. You can see that that thing is not exactly perfect. But its magic is the fact that it's not exactly perfect. This thing, when you're casting it, and I've got a couple different baits with varying degrees of uh, jacked up lips, this thing will go along in a straight line and all of a sudden it'll dart out in pretty wild ways, almost to the point where I think I've got a fish on before I do. These old baits definitely hunted better because of that lip. When Rapala acquired Storm, they retooled the molds because they saw that as a flaw, and the baits now are much more consistent out of the package. That being said, they don't have that crazy random hunting action that the originals have. In addition to that, the new baits have a steel shot while the originals had lead. It's definitely a different sound of the new versus the old. Here's a new wiggle wart. And here's the original. 
That kind of sounded the same. Let me do it this way. Here, and by the way, so here's the original, here's the new. The original definitely has a more low pitch click to it. It's subtle, but it's different. And that lower pitch click, I think more closely emulates a fleeing crawfish. The plastic in these two baits is also different. The older plastic, which I think probably got banned because it had something bad in it, um, is a denser plastic. And as a result, it rises more slowly in the water column. The newer one is a lighter plastic and it tends to float up quicker. These baits truly shine in the early spring. And when those fish are a little bit more lethargic, I think that original floats up at just slow enough of a rate to trigger some inactive fish that may not hit the new one. Here's a pretty cool original Storm Wigglewort box. Let's see what this thing says. If the lure leans toward one side throughout the retrieve, adjust by bending the eye slightly toward the side riding lowest in the water. Storm Manufacturing Company based in Norman, Oklahoma. There's also some stats on, ah, shoot. There's also some stats on the inside of the box. Uh, order number V3, action, deep diver. Approximate weight, three eighths of an ounce. Length, three inches. And that right there is some silver gold. Oh, what an awesome bait. I was able to get on the water earlier today with the original pre wrap of the wart. We got a few fish on it. I do want to show you some of the action out there. It was pretty cool to fish with this bait. All right, I'll see you guys on the water. One of the craziest things about this bait, really an anomaly, I think, when it comes to crankbaits. Rapala purchased Storm, I forget what year they did it, and they made the baits better. The molds from Storm were not the best. Um, they would often result in these uh, crankbaits that had jagged lips that weren't matched up. Um, overall, the production quality was not that great. So Rapala comes in, being the lure manufacturer they are. They retool the molds, they make those baits perfect. The trouble is, what made that wiggle wart so successful was its imperfection. It was that jagged lip that really caused this crankbait to hunt in a way that, that most other crankbaits do not. And to be honest with you, even the new wiggle warts don't hunt the same way. To say there's an impassioned following for pre rappel of wiggle warts is an understatement. You can go online and see there are groups that are dedicated to the pre-Rapala wiggle wart. Collect them, they trade them, they talk about them. Uh, and I managed to pick up a few. The crazy part about the baits is, I don't know, <laughs> got a little weed here. The crazy part about these baits is I don't know, they all look very different. Uh, the one I'm fishing with now, I'm on a lake with a lot of shad. I'm fishing with a white pattern pre rapala wiggle wart and I'll show you guys the lip on this sucker. Hopefully you can appreciate that. It is not a pretty sight, but a beautiful sight. Oh, there's one. <laughs> All right, got one of the storm. Whoa, wiggle wart. This little buddy's dancing. Come here, man. Ha <laughs> ha. Check him out, mouthful of hooks. If I can unhook him without getting myself all hooked up. Check him out, all right. Nice little bait. Man, it's, it's pretty crazy when you see this thing. It definitely looks all jacked up in the lip and that is the beauty of this bait. It is an imperfect beauty. And there you go, nice little fish. I remember my first experience with the storm wiggle wart. I was out on Buckskin Lake fishing with my buddy Jay, and Jay 
actually had the wiggle wart, not I. It was, of course, a pre rapala because we're talking about 1989 here. And it was in a perch pattern. We were in this little uh, paddle boat fishing around the lake. And I think I was getting a few fish on like a bayou boogie. Anyway, uh, Jay had this wiggle wart and his first cast, he reels it in. And just for fun, he does like a figure eight with the thing right by the boat. And sure enough, a two pounder smacked it. Um, <laughs> the rest of the day, I think Jay fished that wiggle wart about three, uh, three feet from the boat and um, proceeded to, I think, outfish me that day. <laughs> Clearly, it's that hunting action of this thing which makes it such a cool bait. Man, I just hooked into one. Nice. Oh, that's a nice, that's a nicer fish. Mm -hmm. These guys are schooling up here. I'm throwing this pre wrap of wiggle wart right into the mix of them. This guy hit right under the boat. That is what you call a pre wrap of wiggle wart fish. <laughs> oh, that was cool. As, by the way, I've been called out a few times on this. Um, did I swap out the old school vintage hooks? Y you darn tootin' I did. Um, <laughs> it's, it's the one thing that is not retro on retro bassin. But there we go, nice, uh, nice looking summertime largemouth bass. We're cranking in about eight feet of water. I've got this wiggle wart just ticking off the tops of some submerged hydrilla. I hit a weed, it popped off it. And there she is. Nice little largemouth bass, man. That's awesome. enjoyed our time on the water with the pre rapple and wiggle work. I'm going to post some pictures of my tackle box on Instagram. Hit me up and let me know which crankbait you want to see featured next on Retro Bassin. Until next time, keep those wiggle warts a hunting and definitely fish it old school. Welcome to Retro Bassin.